Professor Lobster. There's a wise old man from the bottom of the sea. He's come to help both you and me. How things work and how things go. Anything you want to know. So if you don't know, I want to know. If you don't know, I need to know. If you don't know, I've got to know. Professor Lobster, and this is the Professor Lobster Show. Now, where's my assistant? Liz? Liz? It's not my fault I'm late, Prof. You left me up a tree. So what's the show all about this week? Well, this week it's about wood, or timber, as we architects like to call it. Let's see what's on the menu. Well, what we've got to start with is tension and compression. Oh, Prof, we had that last week. Well, you're going to have it again. It's very good for you. Do you remember last week we saw stone breaking tension? Well, here it is again in slow motion. That's what happens when stone breaks in tension. Now, timber's different. The main course today is joints. Mmm, I hope we have roast beef. Oh, not that kind of joint. Joints in wood where they're cut into shapes and connected together to make pieces of structure. And for pudding, we've got a truss. A truss? Yes. A truss is a piece of structure that's made out of other pieces of wood connected together. <laughs> is that a hat or a cave? <laughs> no, it's a roof truss. It's what holds a roof up. You mean we're actually going to go to a building with a roof on? Yes. And we're also going to have a competition with the three teams, black, yellow and red. And it's going to be the Professor Lobster Truss Building Competition. <laughs> And better still, there's going to be a great prize, Professor Lobster Rock! Yay! But you're not getting it yet. Ah, we'll get it later. Now, come on, Liz, what we're going to do is go and see a Lizzie-sized bridge. A Lizzie-sized bridge? Yes. Once upon a time, 500 years ago, it was a wedding present. I thought you said it was a bridge. It is. It's a gatehouse as well. What do you mean? Well, it's a gatehouse. It's built over, the bridge is over a moat around a, a manor house. How old is it, think? It's late 15th century. Looks a bit like a Lizzie-sized house. <laughs> it does. Oh, look at that. A Lizzie-sized door. Bet you couldn't get in here. Well, it might be a bit difficult, but I can get through this bigger door. Oh, it's all leaning. Well, that doesn't matter. Not crooked. Well, it's OK. It's still standing. Yeah, but it's a bit dangerous, isn't it? No, it's not dangerous at all. It's... it's made of oak. It's a very strong structure. The fact it's leaning doesn't matter. I mean, we lean sometimes. If I lean a bit, I'm OK. It's only if I lean too far. You want another prop prop Well, that's here, it. Though. And this is propped as well. Can you see those diagonal braces at the top there to stiffen the structure when the wind blows? Because otherwise it would twist. Isn't it dangerous, though? No, this is a very strong structure. Come on, prop. I'm off to find my little size room. Oh, oh man, this is great. I can touch it. This is the main structural member. It's called the tie beam. And what are those three marks there? Oh, those are carpenter's marks. There, there's three more marks on there put on by the man who made it because they were assembled somewhere else before being brought to the site. And the whole building is like a kit of parts. It's like a construction kit. You could take it to pieces and move it somewhere else if you liked. Big one. What's it for? Well, that's a collar beam tying it together, and this is a queen post, and up there is a pearl in, and oh, this is getting a little bit complicated. I'm going to have to simplify it somehow. Yeah, I wish uh, you would. Well, I think if we, if I could go outside, I could do it. That's, oh, we're not going outside at all. Well, no, it's a bit cold. I'll tell you what, we'll get as near to the outside as we can, because just outside there is the sky. Here are the, the stone slates. The stone slates are held in place by little pegs there. They're wood pegs that are sitting onto battens. These are little beams. And the battens sit onto rafters, and the rafters in turn run up and sit onto this big beam, which is called a purlin. And the purlins run across and go into the roof trusses. And the truss, which is a big triangulated beam, holds the centre of the roof up. It's really a very enjoyable construction. I think it is anyway. Well, why doesn't it all fall down? Well, because all these pieces of timber are slotted together, and then they're pinned with these pegs. All these pegs all over the show. And the pegs are made of oak. See, that's one. They're tapered and knocked into place. What earth are 
are you doing, Pro? Well, I'm playing with this peg toy. Look how nice the shapes are that go together. I used to have one of these when I was a small lobster. It's a good educational toy. That's all very nice, but haven't we got work to do? You were going to tell us all about wood. You're absolutely right. Well, Elizabeth, will you get me a piece of wood, please? What we're going to do is test it on this device over here. Oh, this is light. It is light, isn't it? Wood is a lot lighter than stone. First, I'll give it the head test. Now, the head test, it's a bit of a silly one, this. See how it bends. This piece of wood bends. I'd be a bit of a head case if I tried it that way. You must have a hard head. Well, you see, it won't bend this way because the wood is stronger in depth. Beams have to have some depth. It's stronger that way than this way. But let's try it on the testing device. Can you give me a, a weight, please? This is a five kilo weight onto this piece of timber. And watch, see? Look. It's elastic, it moves, it doesn't, it's not rigid like stone. It's not so good in compression, but it's better in tension. Now, do you remember, when we had, last week, we had this stone, well, about 40 kilos broke it, and it broke away like that, didn't it? Now, this is much thicker than the timber. Now, the next test I'm going to do is I'm going to load this with about 40 kilos. Now, what do you think will happen? It'll break. No, it won't. Yes, it will. It's only wood. Uh, no, it won't. What do you think? No! Yes, it will. You just watch. What do you think? No. Yes, it will. Now, we'll have a go. Now, we'll put this in the middle. This is the point load again. And we've got one kilogram on. Let's have some weights, please. Count it as it goes on. Now, six. I've got one over there. Yes, another one here. That's 11. Thank you. Look at it bending. My goodness, mm -hmm. it's looking a bit flighty. I'm confident. What's it going to do? It's going to break. No, it's not going to break there. That's 16. Here we come now. 20 21. Watts. Oh, she's getting better. 26. Look at that. Is it going to break? Here's 36. Look. Mm. Two more, please. Let's just take it up. 38, 40. Now, I bet you thought that was going to break, and it didn't. So, timber is much better in tension than stone. Now, another way of joining two pieces of wood is with nails. So, the black team has two pieces of wood and one nail. Red team has two pieces and two nails, and the yellow team has two pieces and three nails. Now, will you nail them together, please, at an angle? Right. Now, that's enough knocking now. Let's see how we've got on. Now, this one here, this, this with one nail in, there's just a pivot, that's really useless. That doesn't work at all. Be careful with it. Now, this next one with two nails will be a bit better, but, see, I can split it, and the wood splits quite easily with nails. You should be very careful. The wood needs more thickness, really. You're looking very glum. But these three at least are in triangulation, and this is getting stronger, but not strong enough. And there must be better ways of making junctions in timber. This looks like a better way to do it, Pro. Yes, it is. That's a dovetail joint. What we've got there is a dovetail going into that, which stops this piece of timber pulling out of that one. It's a very nice one. This is another joint, a very simple one, the lap joint. It's not very strong that way, and it turns this way quite easily, the lap joint. Now, the next one is a very important joint. This is one that's most commonly used. It's called a mortise and tenon. That's the mortise with the hole in it, and this is the tenon, and the tenon goes into the mortise there, and it makes a very strong joint that takes a lot of pressure. Finally, what we've got here, have I done that too hard? That's good. Yeah. What we've got here is a tusked tenon. Now, the tusked tenon, see, has got steps down there, and it connects in. There's the peg you were talking Oh, yes, about. good, thank you. And this tenon there, that's the tenon, sorry, this is the tusk bit, or peg, goes in there, and it means that you can't pull this apart. Now, this doesn't have any glues, screws, or nails. It's like a piece of traditional medieval carpentry. It's lovely construction. Now, I hope that's not too tight. You take it apart. Yep. Put it in the sack. And then what Liz is going to do is give each of the teams a sack of joints. Now, don't get them out yet, because what we're going to see, they're all mixed up. Don't worry about that. We're going to see if you can put them together if you're any good and if you've listened and looked at what I've just shown you. Now come here camera four. While they're doing that what we're going to do is go and see some real joints in timber building and I'm going to take you to see one of the finest timber structures in Britain. But we 
you doing here, Prof, with this? Well, I want you to carry this corn into a building with me. Oh, but look all right, Steve, holding me. Uh, you'll be all right. Come on, we're going to go and pay some taxes. Taxes? Yes, taxes. What do you mean? We can't use this, Prof. It's not proper money. Oh, in olden days, they used to use stuff like this for money. And they used to take it to buildings like this one over here. I think he's got it wrong again. This program's supposed to be about wood, not stone. You're right, Liz. It's a strong stone building. Even the roof's got stone slates on it. It looks like some of the churches you've been taking me well, to. Well, it's not a church, but it was built by the church. It's a barn. In fact, it's a tax office. Can you see that sign? But in the Middle Ages, they used to call them tithes. And tithes were taxes. And people paid the tithe to the church. And they paid it in the form of hay and corn and produce. Things that they grew on their farms. It was like a sort of rent. But what I've brought you to see is that. Yes, it's made of trees. It's like a cathedral to put hay inside. It's 58 metres long, about 10 metres wide, and 12 or 13 metres up to these arched trusses which are holding up the pointed roof. And the pointed roof, remember, is heavy and it's pressing the walls out sideways. So they're very, very he heavy timbers. And what I like to see is the way they're all connected together, remember. See, there's, there's wind bracing there and purlins and rafters. And oh, the wind... Prof, there's so many new words, trufflings and purlins and whatever. Well, they're old words, these, but you need to know them to be able to tell a carpenter how to build a roof. You might be a carpenter someday, you never know. You can see the curved wind bracing and the main truss coming down past the wall plate, down into the wall to a spreader beam which spreads the load out into the masonry. And remember, timber construction is all about connections. There's lots of different kinds of trusses. Elizabeth, please bring on the truss wardrobe. Well, we've done some pretty silly things in this show, but this is ridiculous. Is this what you want, Pro? Yes, that's great. He's really flipped it this time. Now, for the first time on British television, the Professor Lobster Trust Fashion Show! Yeah! It now gives me great pleasure to introduce the Trust Fashion Show. First, Liz wearing a collar truss. It's a very simple number. The collar stops the rafters from spreading. Thank you, Liz. Next. Now, this is a collar truss, but it has arched braces at the bottom. Those curved pieces brace the arch against the wall. Great. Next, please. Now, this is a famous truss. This one is the king post truss. You can see the king post in the middle. The big beam at the bottom is called a tie beam. And it's a tough little truss, that one. Great, thank you. Now, this is the hammer beam truss. It's a medieval truss, and it was made out of small pieces of timber. You can see the arched braces, and they use this a lot in church roofs. They carved angels on the ends of the bits that are sticking out. Thank you very much. And finally, We've got Dennis in a little modern number, the gang nail truss. Now the gang nail truss is made out of small, very cheap pieces of wood that are connected together with those nails, the plates that you can see. It's a mass produced truss. There's a lot of them used in housing today. Thank you, Dennis. That was all very nice, Prof. It was a brilliant fashion show. But why do we always have to look at old buildings? Why can't we go and look at a new, modern one? Well, you want a change? Yeah. OK, well, we'll have to have a change of clothes. Why? Come on. It's gone mad. This is not very nice, Prof. But what's this got to do with wood? Well, we've come here to look at this modern roof. This is bigger than that barn that we saw in Bradford-on-Avon. It's one and a half times as wide, and yet the structure's only about a quarter of the weight. And when you look at those trusses up there, can you see how they're made out of long pieces of timber? They're only about three metres long, and they're small in size, and they're all interconnected, and they're bolted together. It's a good piece of modern construction.
Oh, I'm refreshed after that swim. I suppose being a lobster, you've got to swim more than other people. Yes, but what we've got to do now is organise the Professor Lobster King Post Truss Competition. Oh, why? Well, we've got three lots of, of trusses here, black, red and yellow. The three teams. Are you ready? Are you steady? Go! Are you ready, ready? Right, let's see how you can do. The question of organisation, this Liz. Depends if they've thought it out and they know what they're doing. The yellow seem to be doing quite well. And what about the black? Black are arguing too much, I think. Yellows are doing quite well. Look at that. Not bad at all. The blacks are struggling a bit. Now, how are we doing? Are the blacks going to win? There's a lot of hammering going on here. The reds are doing quite well. Come on, the yellow. What are you doing? Come on, the reds. Don't fight with one another. Stand up when you've done it. Anybody done it yet? Oh, stand up when you think you've done it. And I'll check it. The reds have stood up first. Oh, no. No, they're not. They haven't finished. Have the yellow finished yet? Come on. Go. Well, the reds have. Let me see if it'll lift up. Now, that's a good test of whether it works. Where are your camera for? The reds have won. It was a lot of trouble. What they didn't do, any of them, was think about it. They all started sticking pieces together. And the secret was to put this one in first, that second, then the struts, and finally this one here. But they did ver Ah, there's one peg missing, but we'll let you off that. Now, Liz, I think it's time we've... Enough knocking, just a minute. Liz, we've got to go and build a house. And you can join us, fill up peg, in a minute or two. Come on, Liz. You'll be bringing those trusses in a minute, and we're going to build a house over here. It's going to be great fun. <laughs> Here we are, three good strong trusses. There we go. Now, the next thing we need are the wall plates. Now, the wall plates sit on the wall. Right, mind your fingers, that's right, one, two, good. And next, the purlins. Now, the purlins sit here, into the trusses, and the rafters sit on them eventually. Now, we've got two purlins. They're a good strong beam. You manage? Good. Okay, same on the other side. No, just a minute, let's get it sitting into the trusses. Oh, and the ridge beam, put the ridge beam in as well. Ridge beam. We'll pass this along. This isn't a structural member, really, like a beam. It's just to hold the ends of the rafters. Are you right, Liz? Mind your fingers. Okay, knock it in. Can you knock it? What we've got is we've got trusses and purlins sitting on them, and then we have the rafters sitting on top of the purlins. Can we have the rafters, please? Now, one goes on the end, I think, there. Right? That's it, sit it over, one in the middle there. That's good. One on the top of this. It sits on top there of the purlin. Easy, I wish all buildings would go up as easily as this one there, see? Next one on the line of the trust. This is really smooth production. Put it down a little bit. There we go, that's nice. And again, it's about time we had more women builders, I reckon. Now finally, can I have the buttons and the tiles, please? We've done this very quickly, I'm very pleased. Very good teamwork, good cooperation. That should have been nailed in place, really. Let's lower that down a bit. And what we've got here is, when I put that on there, what we've got is the tiles on the outside, the battens, the rafters, the purlins, and the trusses. A complete roofing system. <laughs> Next week's programme's gonna be about... Bridges! Yes, and I'm gonna be building some bridges out of spaghetti here in the kitchen. Anything's possible on the Professor Lobster Show. Remember, that's the salute. And remember, the motto is, if you don't know, ask. Professor Lobster, Lobster, Lobster. Lobster.